Okay, so let's talk about some frequently asked questions about Piguacula. So, number one, can you wear contact lenses if you have a Piguacula? And the answer is absolutely you can. So there's no contraindication to wearing contact lenses if you have a Piguacula. There's been a lot of talk in optometry literature about Piguacula and contact lenses. Do contact lenses cause Piguacula? Do they irritate it? And it can kind of go both ways. Sometimes if you wear a soft contact lens, that contact lens is going to partially cover that Piguacula and kind of protect it. And so if it's irritating you, it's not going to irritate you as much. On the other hand, sometimes you'll have a contact lens, depending on how it fits, that bumps up against that um, Piguacula all the time, and it's actually a little bit more irritating. So it can depend on the person whether a contact lens is going to bother you or not, but if you don't feel any irritation with wearing your contact lenses, there's no harm in wearing them. There has been some talk about contact lenses and do they cause a Piguacula to develop. And the most recent studies that they've done on this show that there's not really any correlation between contact lens wear and the development of Piguacula. So I think you can be safely assured Sure that wearing a contact lens isn't going to cause a pinguacula to develop. Okay, so another common question, is this a tumor? It might be a tumor. It's not a tumor. It's not a tumor at all. And the answer is a pinguacula is not a tumor. This is a benign growth on the surface of your eye. It's not going to develop into any type of malignancy. So if your eye doctors rule out any of the malignancy, you don't have to worry about your pinguacula developing in that. Another common question is what's the difference between a pinguacula and a pterygium? I talked about that a little bit before. So basically a pinguacula is a growth that stays confined to the conjunctiva. If it starts to grow onto the surface of the cornea, then it's called a pterygium. A pterygium is a little bit different because it can advance onto the cornea. And in rare cases, it can progress far enough that it can start to affect your vision and interfere with your line of sight. But again, they can do surgery to remove a pterygium and uh, get rid of that. The other thing a pterygium can do is that if it's pulling and there's some scarring that's developing on the surface of the cornea, it can actually distort and warp the cornea and change your prescription, develop uh, more astigmatism, and that that would might be another reason to get that surgically removed. Can a pinguecula develop into a pterygium? Sometimes it can, but it doesn't always do so. It typically depends on if there's a lot more aggressive blood vessels in that pinguecula. If there tends to be and they, they're growing a lot, then it often might develop into a pterygium, but pinguaculas don't always lead to pterygiums. So another question is, is there a chance of this leading to blindness or affecting my vision? Again, we talked about that. Pinguaculas aren't going to affect your vision in any way. There's no risk for that. Another common question is, is this a cataract? So there's a common misconception out there that a cataract is a film that develops over the surface, which sounds like a pinguecula or a pterygium, but a cataract is not a pinguecula or related in any way to a pinguecula. A cataract is inside the eye and it and it develops when the lens naturally gets cloudy with age. Everyone develops a cataract over time. And if you want more information about cataract and cataract surgery, I've got another video up here. Feel free to take a look at that playlist. All right, and so before I forget, if you've learned anything new about Pinguecula so far, make sure you hit that like button down below so you can tell YouTube the value of this video. Another common question, is this related to my cholesterol? Does it mean I have high cholesterol? And the answer is no. So pinguecula definitely don't be developed because you have high cholesterol. They have done some studies seeing if there is some association with pinguecula and cholesterol. And what they did find is that individuals that do tend to develop, develop pinguecula, they might have an altered metabolism of the cholesterol, but it doesn't mean that you have high cholesterol. Another question about systemic conditions is, is this related to my liver or is this jaundice? So you may be familiar if you have jaundice, one of the symptoms that might develop is that you get yellow eyes. Basically the white part of your eye starts to look yellow and that is totally different than a pinguecula. The yellowness on a pinguecula is due to fatty tissue that's, that develops and, and, and is put down in, in place there. The yellowness in jaundice is due to a pigment that develops in the sclera, not the conjunctiva, that makes the surface of the, uh, the sclera looks yellow. So this is definitely not related to your liver or jaundice or anything like that. Uh, okay, and so last question, I promised you, what drops should you not be using if you have a pinguecula? So if you have a pinguecula, and particularly if you have pinguiculitis, where it's really inflamed and red, you have more blood vessels in the surface of the eye. One, one of the main things people are worried about is that it makes my eye look more red and looks a little bit more irritated. Well, so you're, what you're going to be wanted to tempted to do is put some eye drops in to get rid of that redness. And so if you go to the drugstore, you're looking at all these drops, and lo and behold, there's a drop that says anti-redness, get the red out. You, why wouldn't you use that drop? Well, that's the drop you don't want to use. You don't want to use these anti-redness or anti-allergy eye drops to treat 
your pinguiculum. So these drops, they have what we call a vasoconstrictor in them. And what this drop does is it constricts the blood vessels on the surface of the uh, conjunctiva to make it look a little bit thinner and less red, which is which sounds like a great thing. However, if you use these drops on a regular basis, you can get a rebound effect of this drop and it actually makes it look worse and it can cause it to make it look more red and look more inflamed and more irritated. And basically your body and the blood vessels, the receptors in the blood vessels, they get used to that drop and you need more of it. And what you find is you put a drop in and you're going, whoa, that didn't work as well as it did the first time. Oh, I got to put another drop and you got to get into this vicious cycle of using these drops over and over and over. And it doesn't seem like they're working as well. And your eyes seem like it gets more red. And then when that happens, you have to kind of stop the drops and it kind of has to get worse before it gets better. And so what you want to do is avoid using the roots drops in the first place. So if you have a pinguacula, definitely stay away from any of the anti-redness or the anti-allergy drops. So another common question we get all the time is, this just developed overnight. I'm really worried about it. Why did it develop so quickly? And so the answer to that question is, it didn't develop overnight. This has developed Inguecula develop over a long period of time, and what happened is you just happened to notice it. For whatever reason, you may have looked really closely in your eye and looked at that. A lot of people have pinguecula and don't even know that they have them. And then one day they look in and they go, whoa, there's this yellow growth on the surface of your eye. And then they get worried and they think, okay, this just developed it. But this has been developing over a long period of time. And so one thing you can be reassured of that it's not something that's just developed overnight. Now, if you do know for sure that a lesion or a lump or growth on the surface of your develop has developed overnight, you definitely want to see your eye doctor to make sure you rule out one of those other things in the differential diagnosis. All right, so I hope you learned a little bit about Pinguecula. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button to get more videos just like this on a regular basis, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And with that, have a great optometry day.